Okay, every blessed each of you, everybody. I want you guys to know that uh, tonight is a Q and A. Yes. However, however, I'm going to be spending about from thirty to forty five minutes with you guys. It's going to be extremely short. Every time I say this, it never happens. Anyway, I'm going to do it anyway. I was poked and prodded on, and of course that that can be uh, Trump, right? Also, I had to go back for test results for an overnight type thing. So we'll see how that works. Anyway, but I'm fine. And, you know, the body recovers. It'll do what it does. Plus, we belong to the most high. This is his, his existence. And he already knows about everything. So, hey, we keep going. Now, we're going to open up the floor for Q&A. I will interject here and there, no doubt, right? That'll come from questions, but I will interject. So, if you guys don't mind that, I'll try not to run away. I'll try not to have one of those uh, runaway things, all right? Not to do that. All right, we're going to go with the first question. Somebody says, what do the two horns on the second beast mean? In Revelation, they represent a lamb. Purely a lamb, nothing else, just a lamb. Um, two horns like a lamb. Here's what it means. When Jesus came, right, he represents what? Jesus was, he came as a lamb, correct? The lamb of God. So he was what? Humble, right? He was full of meekness, full of servitude. He was. He was. And he... He gave his life right? for the sins of others. He did. He sacrificed much when he was here. This beast character is going to be just like that. Just like that. A lot of people have this beast character, right? As coming on the scene and he's hateful. He's uh, controlling this and the other. No. Nope. If, if we're going to look in the book of Daniel, I'm going to show you something. Because this guy wins people over like you wouldn't believe. In fact, God uses his own creation to foreshadow a great many things. And according to the word of God, the beast character is not going to come in like the movies have portrayed. So let me read something to you guys real quick so that you see it. And then we'll move on from there. Okay. Here it is. We get here. Let me. Oh, I sound the one. Hold on, guys. It's it's, uh, starting up here. Starting up here. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Daniel 11. Daniel 11. You guys with me? Daniel 11. I'm going to start at, let's start at uh, Daniel chapter 11. And I'm going to start right here in, right here. Here we go. Daniel 11, 19. Then shall he turn his face towards the port of his own land, but he shall stumble and fall and not be found. Right? That's one horn falling. Then shall stand up in his estate a raiser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom, but within a few days he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. That's two. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person. Now right before him, another one. Right? Another one was ousted. So you have, before this guy rises, by proxy, or or, or by standard that they have, right? Um, He's not really... It looks like he's not really elected. It looks like he is, he gets put in position um, uh, simply by a succession of sorts. Okay. And it says in Daniel eleven twenty three. 23, I mean, Daniel eleven twenty one. 21, and in his estate shall stand up a vile person. A vile person is going to stand up to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but shall come in peaceably. Fact number one, he comes in peaceably, not forcefully. He'll obtain the kingdom by flatteries. He's going to tell everybody what they want to hear, right? So he's coming in peaceably. He's going to tell everybody what they want to hear. And with the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. Even, even those, right? The prince of the covenant, there's only one covenant uh, God would recognize in the Middle East, and that will be Israel. The prince of the covenant 
right, would be the one in charge of that land. Daniel, and after a league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, right? So after he's in power, he's going to work deceitfully. Listen, for he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. He shall come up and become strong with the small people. So imagine a person who comes in, right? Those in power do not give him the honor of the kingdom. So we're not talking about the citizens. Really think of this. We're not talking about the citizens. We're talking about somebody who comes into this kingdom that the folks who are in power already, they don't give him the honor of the kingdom. They don't want it. But he tells the people exactly what they want to hear. And he, he overcomes all the opposition by way of flatteries. And he comes up with a small people. So that means he has elected his own group with him to come in and to grow. Let's continue to read. He shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the province. He shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey, the spoil, and the riches. Yea, he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for time. So he's going to be a distributor of wealth. He's going to cause wealth to begin to, to blossom, right, in the Middle East. Okay, let's continue. And he shall stir up his power and his courage. His courage against king of the south with a great army. The king of the south shall be stirred up to do battle with a very great and mighty army. But he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. So the king of the south is going to be stirred up to do power with this guy. But he'll forecast his devices against him, meaning his, his, his plans, his political ties, whatever the case is. Um, they're going to talk about that and stop the aggressor by, by policies, right? By agreement of other nations. Let's continue. Yea, they that feed of a portion of his meat shall destroy him, and his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. So his, his army is going to grow. His loyalists are going to grow. They're going to grow big time. He shall turn, he shall return into his own land with great riches and his heart shall be against the Holy Covenant and he shall do exploits and return to his own land. There's only one Holy Covenant. There's no other Holy Covenant in the word of God, right? Let's keep going because you have to see this. At the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as former nor as the latter. For the ships of Shittim shall come against him. Therefore, he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them, plural, that forsake the Holy Covenant. So he's going to start mustering forces in the Middle East. Uh, all those who hate Israel. He's going to start mustering forces who also hate Israel. Right? They're going to start building up loyalists by way of armies that way. And here it is, Daniel 11, 31, and arms shall stand on his part. They collectively shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice and shall place the abomination that make it desolate. So there he is. This is who comes up from a small people, right? They will not give him the honor of the kingdom, but he'll overflow them by way of flatteries. He's going to tell the people exactly what they want to hear. The people will prosper by this guy, by his policies, by what he puts in motion. People are going to become prosperous in the Middle East. The Middle East is not going to be like it is now. It's going to become prosperous. Even right now, do you guys know what the number one city is about to be in the Middle East? Anybody? Let me put it to you this way. Um, it, it's, it's, it's probably well over. It's got to be in the trillions right now, trillions of dollars has been put into several projects. All of this comes from one country. Somebody says Dubai. Nope, not Dubai. Dubai is going to look like a bathroom when this is done. And it's going to be done in another, well, this year. This year. It'll be done this year. This year. Um, what you may not know is what has happened behind the scenes. What you may not know is the independence the Middle East has concerning the U.S. They don't need the U.S.A. anymore. Just letting you know that they don't need the money from the USA or anything else. 
They have actually started up their own. They have their own economic system. They have their own. Now, all the computer systems right now that run that have the dollar at a substandard set in all their software trading. And, and, and there's no way a person can enter into that financial sector, right? Because it takes 16 of our dollars to equal one of theirs. So it's not going to work. It's just not going to work out. Anyway, they're growing by leaps and bounds, right? You can see this even with the Houthis. Now imagine this. You know what our Navy is fighting, right? The USA's Navy is fighting the Houthis. That's who we're fighting. You know what the commanders say? That the Houthis are formidable. They're formidable. Do you hear me? That's what the commanders are saying. They're not blowing things off. Troops are tired over there. They, I mean, these folks are engaging in, in quite a few things, and they keep attacking. Iran has open told them, you know, probably not a good idea to do that, but they're operating independently from Iran, come to find out the weapons being used there. Well, this is mess, yeah. But some of the weapons being used there are engineered not from Iran, but from two other places. And one is North Korea. Isn't that so? Somebody says, Mr. Mike Pharaoh is a title. Was there an Assyrian Pharaoh in the Bible, not the Pharaoh during at the time of Moses? Well, Pharaoh, actually, Pharaoh, yes, is a title. But at that time, there was a distinction in the formation of kingdoms during that time, especially at the time of Moses, right? You had, I know what, what, what archaeologists say. I know what the arguments in the Bible are. But at that time, you had the structure of kingdoms that were being undone except for Babylon. Babylon was just overwhelming everything during that time. Everything during that time. Some of the, out, the, the outskirts or these leftover Nephilim and Raphaim, right, kingdoms, they were being... They were just, you know, going down the tubes. They ran into problems. And so to say if there was an Assyrian, a mixed Assyrian pharaoh or something like that, right, is it's kind of one of those areas that really nobody can say that. Number one, the, the history does not support great accuracy back that far, save the stories in the Bible. It doesn't. Egypt rose three times. Three times Egypt rose. And, and the, um, the last thing I'll say is this. The, the oldest pyramids in the world right, are in South America. Boy, that just tore up everything, didn't it? But they are. Today, they're in South America, right? They are. Everybody's going to not agree with this, but it's okay. The truth will, you know, people will find it. But you're talking about um, findings made in 2020 that through the day a long, long way, right? We're, we're talking more than 40 or 50,000 years. So it threw it back a long ways. They're also, I, if I'm not mistaken, either this year or next year, they have a brand new base text to release, which gives answer to what was happening in, in other countries, even in America. America's not as young as you think it is, right? I know what everybody was taught, that one point, everything was one big landmass. Well, let me share this. Can I share something with you guys, please? Because every time I hear that, right, I, I just cringe. I do. I cringe. Here's why. When they start going through that idea, first of all, computer modeling helps a lot, Right? Somebody said, what about the Black Pyramid in Alaska? Well, it showed up in, it kind of showed up. That was back in the, back in the 50s. It showed up back then. Anyway, the computer modeling has revealed a lot. LIDAR has revealed even more. They're finding civilizations on this earth. Because LIDAR allows you to strip away the, the uh, trees, to strip away all this, you know, foliage on top. And they're finding so much 
there's no way history is going to stay the same. History is not going to stay the same. So, but it will give answer to a lot of things. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you guys, it's these kingdoms that are rising, right? These, uh, the way the world is going right now, they, they have hid so much. They have classified things that shouldn't have been classified. And now there's no choice but for things to be released. And some of these, you know, they have by way of satellite located some areas and it will take them probably all year to get to before they can ever enter inside. You're looking at more buildings, even in the ocean, right? I believe it's the fourth or fifth crystal city complex they found underneath the waters. And this is, these are older than the ones found uh, near Pumapuku, all those different places up there. So we're going to have some different things happening in history, but computer modeling is pretty good. And when you look at the world back then, right? Say back during the time of, of Noah, where there was not a lot of rain, right? Where there was a water canopy of, of some sort, water canopy. Um, the, the, the land masses did not drift apart because they were never floating like people suggest. The land masses are constantly, constantly bubbling up, right? And crashing into each other and rolling out over or under. That's what they're doing. It is the water that came in, right? The land masses did, it really didn't do anything different. The water, when the water came in, it altered different places based on altitude. Right, so when you look at the modeling, computer modeling, of when the oceans actually came in and did what they did, it, it makes sense. And it just so happens that the flow of currents and erosion are responsible for a lot of the shapes that you see how things are similar and fit together. But some, some, some continents share nothing in common. They look alike, yes, only by way of ocean currents and the big icebergs that were here that started to move and they took away large places of soil away, right? Only on the top, but yeah, this idea that everything sitting at the center of the planet and they drifted apart, that is the craziest thing I've ever seen because the land does not float. If you take away the water, the earth is this big solid ball, right? You take away the water, the earth is one big, huge solid ball. That's it. The land masses are still going to go through their cycles. Of you, you have rising lands and you have descending lands. And they go through a cycle based on the fault lines. And that's what happens based on the fault lines. The water comes in and complements the fault lines because of altitude, right? Because of topology. Not because one landmass is floating away from the other. Now, that, that's just, I just give you that small demonstration of how they have us think subconsciously of certain things, right? And we never question those things. Some of you guys that are good with modeling or you can, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know in your minds and hearts and everything else, it does not make sense why they continue to teach that. But that's called propaganda, right? That's a theory. Right, that, that hardly anybody is going to contest. By the way, when you look at the actual land masses with a, I mean, an actual snapshot of this planet, well, then that's when you find out somebody has been altering how continents look. So there's a lot of misrepresentation, a lot of misdirection, this, that, and the other going on. It is, it is. And uh, they have their reasons. They do. But... It makes us believe that certain stories are real, right? Like, why won't they explain all the Egyptian artifacts that are in Mexico and the USA? Why is Ohio one of the most important places in America right now? Hmm? The city of the sun. You guys ever hear that? Why is that in Ohio? Anybody? Hmm. They will not open up the catacombs below the salt as though people are going to be satisfied with just the salt. 
you know, sometimes they mine areas just to keep people out. And, and they found that, did you, you guys know about the pyramid, the two pyramids they found in Ohio, correct? You guys may not know, China is full of pyramids and they hope to reach one by 2020. So I'll say that again, China hopes to reach one of their pyramids by 2026. You know that China is the landmass with the interior bubbles. Now these bubbles are places, they are big caverns. And when I say big, I mean huge, that have life in them. If you do know that, they have life in them, these caverns. They hope to reach those caverns by 2020. So anyway, when it comes to historical things, things are jumbled up. They are, they're jumbled. I really hold no stock in a lot of historical things. There's too many lies out there, right? And once you, once you start to know this, when, for example, you guys are going to be introduced piece by piece, you're going to be introduced into a history that's going to show that the history that you held was a lie. And when that happens, if they do it all at once, you lose absolute confidence in most of your historical knowledge, right? You shouldn't do that. You should just weigh everything very carefully. But they're going to do it piece by piece as they are doing now. And the more they do this, the more you're going to find out that what you previously believed was wrong, right? It was absolutely wrong. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. And when you're talking about things back in the time of Moses, a lot of that information is speculation, not fact. It is a best uh, uh, educated guess. It is not fact. It's just not fact. Okay. Somebody said, uh, could you do a talk, Mark? We will. We will. They said they're confused about the bracelet. Okay, let's talk about the social social uh, security card. How many of you have a social security card? How many? How many have one? How many have one? All of you, right? And if you don't have one, you're going to run into a time where you need one. Same thing with the bracelet. If you don't have your social security card, right? And you have improper identification. Now, did they arrest you to get a social security card? No, but you're not going to get a, you're not going to get certain, you know, citizen rights without it. Correct. That's how you're forced to get things. See how that works. How many of you have a license? Many of you, right? Nobody forced you to get a license, but guess what? You can't do certain things without a license. In my opinion, they force you to get it. It's just the method of how they force you to get it. You don't really recognize as force, do you? See, so my point is this. You guys are already tagged. They're already giving things out. So don't be thrown off by a bracelet. It'll be nothing more than a new type of a social or driver's license. They already have the digital driver's license. That's established. In Australia, Australia is the pilot program for that. And so that's going to go all around the world. The technology for these things has been developed and it's going to be on your wrist for security because of hackers. I'll say it again, hacking, cyber crimes is going to be the number one crime of all of you, all of you. And people will demand that biometrics be implemented right away. When they hit your pocket, that's when you'll speak up. That's when you'll speak up. Now, the mark of the beast. So what is mark of the beast? Well, lots of people have an idea on the mark of the beast. I'm not going to say I know exactly what the mark of the beast is, but I will tell you this. In the Bible, it says he causes all. He causes them. You hear that language? He causes all. So if you cause someone to get the mark, then you're doing the same thing like you just caused, like somebody caused all of you or something caused all of you that have a driver's license to get one. Something did, right? Something caused all of you to get a social security card. Something caused all of you to get shoes. You don't have to wear shoes. Show me a law where it says you have to wear shoes. Show me a law. Where it says we have to do half the things we do. We don't. But they're causing you to do it.
They're causing you to do it. And that, and that's something. So the beast will do the same thing. But here's what you have to know. Satan can never cause you, right? Forcefully make you. He cannot make you not believe in God, to not believe in Christ. Nobody can make you turn against Christ or turn against him. They can deceive you into doing it, can't they? In fact, if you turn against God, you are deceived. How about that? There you go. Larry G said, you can't buy or sell. There it is. Same thing with your identification. Same thing with certain credentials that you have to carry, right? It's the same thing. If you want to go buy your juju beans, you're going to have to have some, you know, some credit or something to get it. All right, back to the questions. Are we doing okay so far, guys? Are we doing okay? Let's clarify something before we go any further. How, who's not going to get the mark at all? Who's not going to get the mark? Somebody answer that. I want you guys to clear that one up. Who's not going to get the mark? Somebody give me the, give me the biblical answer of who will not get the mark of the beast. Can I be controversial and hurt feelings? Can I hurt feelings? Maybe it'll motivate. Maybe you'll say, not me. Let me get myself in, in check, right? I hear this. Somebody says God's children. Somebody says 144,000. Somebody says those who are sealed. Here it is. You ready? Those who are written in the book of life. Those who are written in the book of life. Remember that. Remember that. Those who are written in the book of life. And why is that so important? Why is that so important? Because if you're written in the book of life, listen to me. If you're in the book of life, if you are in the book of life, you are part of the Most High's family. You have finished your race. You have completed things. You're not blotted out, right? See, because you can't forget the falling away. There is coming a time, and that time is here, and the process is beginning for people who were once, who belong to Christ, will turn against him. Now, Jesus said he won't lose any of us, but I need you to hear me. He won't lose anybody who is embracing and obeying him as Messiah. Do you hear me? You don't belong to him if you don't obey him. If you don't obey Christ, you don't belong to him. Remember that. Remember that because there's far too many people who are doing anything and everything they want to do. And they, they really do think that they're going to make it. And somebody has to speak up and tell them, no, you're not. You disobey the Most High. You work against the Most High and do it your way. And you are not purposely not obeying the Lord. You don't belong to Him. And if you don't belong to Him, you're not in the book. You can be blotted out of the book. We cannot live our way. And say, well, God will just forgive me. No, Christ came that we may be forgiven when we repent. When we turn from sin, something has crept into the body of Christ and has desensitized it. Why do you think a lot of power has been zapped from people's lives to exercise simple spiritual authority in their own hearts? We really do have a crisis, and it's unfortunate. Not too many people see it that way. You can't force anybody to be righteous. This must be a person's choice, not something that anybody should just say, hey, you need to, you need to do this and do that. You can't do that. You, a person must choose it, and those who have chosen it must represent it because something has desensitized. And we know what that something is. If he can weaken people enough, he will destroy them. And I don't know about you. If you've ever read Revelation prior to this study, then you know that the world was worshiping the dragon and worshiping the beast and blaspheming God. You know that. You know that the body of Christ is but a remnant. You know that Jesus identified this time this era that we're in, 
Let me clarify the error. You ready? So long as he has gone to sit at the right hand of the Father and he has not come back, you're in the era of grace. When he comes back, that era is done and the judgment will sit. You can be forgiven so long as he's not back yet and so long as you're alive. When he returns, you cannot be forgiven. It's going to be over. He wants you ready. See, there are some meaty scriptures in the Bible. We read one in First Peter. And do you not know that three people made a comment on that scripture? And I'll tell you why. It's nobody's fault. It's nobody's fault. The problem is, the problem is, is still within our hearts. We have desires that should be purged by them. If they're not purged, we're not praying that they be purged. We haven't done that the Lord's way. It's just like cancer. You know, in the realm of reality, what people call reality, you're always going to have a representation of a spiritual Christ. Cancer is an epidemic in this world. It is. What has crept into the body of Christ, what has crept into the world, is just like cancer, spiritual cancer. It is causing people to excuse themselves, aim to what they're doing, justifying everything, saying it's okay, because there's no instant consequence, which, by the way, is taking advantage of God's grace. He's coming back. And as things unfold, as the world continues to degrade, as weather conditions continue to flip and to flop and to break records and mess people's holidays up, it should be a clear demonstration that things are changing. When you see the change, when everybody sees the physical changes, when they see it, I'm telling you, you'll have moments before it's too late to believe. If you start seeing supernatural things, then the time of faith is almost is not having things proven. And believing in them based on internal confirmation. When we start believing because we're seeing things, so oh boy, that's when people are going to be marked for damnation permanently. There is no coming back when that takes place. And nobody's going anywhere, the Bible says. Nobody is. Till that man of perdition be revealed. There must come a falling away first. And that man of perdition is going to be revealed. The one who's coming is after Satan, all the workings of Satan. The Antichrist. Nobody's going anywhere until that takes place. And if you're alive, after that takes place, at the last trump, not the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth, but at the last trump, the mystery of God should be finished, which is the resurrection. You know there's a first resurrection? And there's another resurrection. You know, there's a, there's a, listen, there's a, there's a second death. Do you guys know that? We're going to study that revelation that always trips people out because they never knew that. It's confusing at first. And when they see it, it'll start to alter your life because you'll have understanding of it. Blessed is he, blessed is he who's, who's of one of those events, not the other one. The second death has no power against those who are involved in something else. And when we get to that, it's going to bless your soul. It's going to bless your soul because the second death is doom. But the second death has no power against a very specific set of people. And you are to be those people. And the qualifications are in Revelation. And we'll see. All we have to do is be true to us. Do you know that? All we have to do is be true to us. The falling away is progressive. Jesus said that began in his day, or, or that that would begin in that time. Certain things in the Bible are progressive. They began with Christ. For example, for example, for example, chapter 2, the Holy, Holy Spirit pouring out on all flesh. Did that happen? Or is it always underway until Christ returns? Jesus said it will always be underway until he returns. So long as he is absent from us, we have another comforter sent 
by the living God in his name. And that's how he's with us. Jesus said the Father will send another comforter in my name. Then the, right after that, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So he is with us via the second comforter. He was the first comforter on earth, which is why he gave directives to the apostles. And they wouldn't carry that out to the disciples. They carried that out. Our directives come by way of the Holy Spirit. He's with us that way. If we obey, if we do not obey, she already gave 15 scriptures concerning that. If we don't obey it, when we choose not to obey the Lord, that's why you find yourself sometimes, it's just true. That's why you find yourself not hearing anything, having no confirmation of nothing. It is blank. Anybody ever been there before? Where you have no guidance, no instruction. You're unsure about what you're doing. You're not, you're just, there's no sureness anywhere. But when you do obey the Lord, you have a confidence in the most high. You know exactly what you're doing and you're led there. Your conscience is clear because you're exercising and doing everything that you can do. Okay, back to questions. Back to questions. What do we have? Somebody has one. I totally missed it, guys. You have to forgive me for that. Is time dilation real? And if so, is it only the LIC that does it? No, no, it is not. Notice up there's a there's a story in the Bible. Well, there are actual lots of stories dealing. Listen, folks, can I can I say something? I might get in trouble. Who cares? Nobody cares. But I do not subscribe to most subjects concerning anything dealing with that. I don't. But time. Time is a concept, not a thing. So I want you to imagine something. All right. Let me stand up too. I want you guys to imagine something with time. I told you guys yesterday about these occurrences of people being in two places at one time. Right? There are guarded places on this earth. Guarded places nobody's ever going to get near. There are other places you can use days. There are places right now on this earth that if you go and stand... Or you stay in that area for, let's say, five minutes, you're going to lose a whole day. You're going to lose a day. Suppose you're chewing a hamburger, right? You're standing in the spot. You can chew that hamburger. Take two bites. Come out of that spot, and the day is gone. Now, how is that possible? How is that even possible? Anybody? How is that possible? Why do they keep so many civilians out from, the, there's a certain part of the Atlantic well, let me say this first. Some of these stories that you guys hear are used to scare people. Okay? Naval ports are set up to blockade people, to keep people away from things. Kind of like national parks, right? National parks are supposed to preserve things, but park rangers, honest ones, who have really risked their lives to intercede for good people, have gotten the raw end of the stick too many times. They found out things. They can't say anything. Shielded areas, guarded areas of things that mankind to this very day does not understand. I'm not going to sit here and, and compliment any kind of scientific books or concepts and say, yes, man totally understands. And no, they don't. No, they don't. If they understood that, they themselves would never be sick. Right now, that that is to say, not everybody understands it. Because I'm going to share something with you guys. How many people, how many people who are really important, die of cancer? How many? Now, the average person has complications in their lives, don't they? Many complications, but there are certain people who have no complications. And here's the funny thing. When they do have complications, it's only a statement. You never view the truth of it. Never, do you? Never. I like, uh, kind of like the election, right? Everybody's looking at this election. They're like, well, I don't know how this is going to work out. What are they going to do? That's easy. We get close to the election. Our president has a medical emergency. In that case, Somebody that nobody ever expected steps up to the plate 
that nobody expected to come. We don't go through a vigorous process and all this and the other because the medical emergency procedures are in place to insert someone. And then they go against the other guy. And then we see what happens because he's frail and old. And at any moment, anybody can say medical emergency and no one would contest it because he's old. And then you would have the Republican candidate going against someone no one ever expected. Oh, innocent. See, that's already part of the procedures. Just that a lot of people don't know that. You know, when you learn something on television and, and something happens, it's, oh, yeah, that was a law, and uh, so that's what happened, and here we are, and let's go for it, right? And we all know what they Somebody said, Michelle, oh, the Obamas are out. They're done for, finished. They're done for. They're, they're done for in that respect. Listen, Washington is not the powerhouse, guys. I'm telling you it's not. If it were the powerhouse, nobody in Washington would lose power. It used to be, and because that ideology was popular, right, people continue to go with it. So let me tell this to you. Who has more power? The guy that's been there 40 years or the person that's been there three years? Who has more power? The guy that's signing every paperwork or not that nobody has ever seen, that civil servant back there who's been there forever, or the person everybody sees on television? Who has more power? Because you see, the guy that has power, he didn't have to get elected. He doesn't didn't have to get elected. Nobody's going to throw him out either. If you see him on television, if the people have selected him, then take note, those are representatives. And the president is the top representative. But those are just representatives. But there are other people who are not representatives. And they do not practice democracy. They preserve democracy. And those are the ones with the power. And it just so happens that is divided between civil servants and the corporate world. And not just the corporate world, but the part of the corporate world that this world will not work with. Hmm? And it just so happens where that's a select group within a select group that you'll never touch. No wonder in Revelation it says, these are ten kings who have received no power as of yet, but will one hour with the beast. For God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to give their power unto the beast. For that, that his indignation, that his will be accomplished. No wonder they have received no kingdom as of yet, but will one hour with the beast. The state people, they tell you everything. And they always laugh when people don't listen. They really do tell you everything, everything on the record. They really do. But let's go ahead and face it. We hear what we want to hear. We have selective listening. Selective listening is when you hear what you want to hear. I got sick the other day, right? And instantly, somebody said, I broke my ribs. I never said that. But, but that's what happens when you start conversating. You do. You'd be surprised how your mind can fill in blanks of things that were never stated. And because no one's really going to challenge anything trivial, right? He continues to go, oh, that's, how the, that's how things work. That's how things get by people. That's how you guys see the truth every single day. But you're taught to ignore the truth, right? Somebody said, I heard fracturing. That's what happened. A bad fracture. Yeah. I didn't mention ribs. No ribs. No ribs are involved. I wish that's a lot easier than other places. That's where we are. You guys, do you, somebody said that? Oh, you guys do see that, right? I tell you what, some of these guys said here, God has called. They tried to tell people it, it's, it's strange. The things I saw, I did not, I, I saw from people who were involved with this stuff. Right? I didn't see that from godly vessels. So the Lord had me in places that were 
far away from any godliness so that I could see certain things, right? When you learn of, of a truth, you're going to find yourself away from holiness to observe it, just to observe. It often happens. Hmm? It often happens. Who he called, he also qualified. Down before he called you, you were not a saint. It's not what you were. You were involved in things. You were behind the scenes with things, right? And then when you get positioned around holy things, right, you certainly don't see what you can bring to the table, but you have been qualified to bring certain things to the table. That's how that works. Don't worry about the rib thing. That was an example. It really is. That's how things, you know, that's how things, um, that's a great, it's a natural thing. My, my point is this. It's a natural thing to us to fill in the gaps. It's natural to fill in the gaps and to just simply accept it ourselves and continue to go forward. It's natural. It's natural. How did we get here in the first place? Somebody says weather update. Yes. It's highly unfortunate. California received three quarters of a year's rain in a night. In a night. It was billions and billions of gallons. So their aquifers and everything else are filling up. Of course, it, it caused quite a bit of damage. And California's landmass period is, is becoming quite fragile. Guys, it's happening. You know, all this stuff, if you pay attention, this stuff keeps happening near San Diego, near Los Angeles place. I saw that building sideways and people screaming, right? Because it just lifted up. The land broke away. You'd be surprised. It does not take a big earthquake to do that. You know what it would take? Listen to this. Right? Due to the grounds, this is an estimation, due to the grounds and the erosion that's taking place, it would take a 4.2 magnitude earthquake, a sustained one, for about six minutes to do that. Do you know that? That's it. Are you kidding? Six minutes and it's over? Yes. A 4.2 earthquake for six minutes will do the damage of an 11.9 earthquake. Just so you understand that. You should keep that in your head, that when you have small earthquakes, and if they last in duration, there's a problem. It's a big problem. See, most people look at the big earthquakes. They say, well, you know, we'd have to have a 20.20 20 for that to happen. No, no. see, and, and in history, doesn't everything always happen with these small things that won't go away? Isn't that how things work? The devastations of mankind have always happened. Sure, we've had major events like the flood that destroyed, right? Many things on the earth. Sure, we had meteor strikes and everything else, but hear me on this. Hear me. In all the documented cases of the horrific things that happened to humanity on this earth, it's always been the small things that continue, that won't go away. For example, what would happen? And I was, I've been thinking about this lately a lot. I mean, a whole lot. But what would happen? The water that California is getting right now, right now, is a blessing. What God did for California, and I know it looked bad, but it's a blessing. Because I keep telling you guys, with all the water that we're getting, people are going to look back on this time and say, I wish I would have saved every drop. That's what they'll say. Because it'll be a dryness none of us have ever experienced. And when that takes place, right, and the water is bitter, the rainwater is bitter, it's not going to be sweet, it's not going to be drinkable. The rainwater is not going to be drinkable. It will be bitter. But when that cycle starts of dryness, the bugs are coming. In. The bugs do not require these big water sources. They only require us. Cannot help but to think what would happen for example, if ants began to replicate, to really start doing things in one direction, and they kept doing it and never stopped. Say, for example, a special species of fire ants, the tiny ones, and bullet ants. 
if they began to spread all over the earth. Water, the ocean, is not going to stop them. It won't. But what would happen if they replicated and did not stop? What would happen if we did not have a winter? All of us would have a bug problem. We don't have enough repellent to stop that. And fire ants have been known to kill many people when they do that. Winter is a blessing. It is one of the only mechanisms that keeps the insect population at bay. There is a boom with the insect population. Hmm? A boom. And we know by reading in a specific book that the Lord's army is a bunch of bugs. Isn't that funny? God will always command his creation. There will be plagues and many different insects, migrations of rodents you never saw before, life forms coming out of the earth, new types of lice, a very dangerous type of pick, and a vicious, vicious mosquito. And all of those things will go from the, 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 the small areas of, of the southern hemisphere, and they'll migrate to the northern hemisphere. Last year, there were different species introduced into North America, the Northern Hemisphere, that killed many of our, you could call them defense insects. Nothing will stop them this year. Nothing. Biter migrations, they're going to continue. They will. So don't be surprised if you see the giant tarantula species all the way up in Tennessee places like that. Don't be surprised. These migrations have begun. Yeah. And we have no immunity to what they will bring. We do. See, sometimes we underestimate these end days. We do. And those who have no protection from Christ, woe unto them, because they can't find enough buck spur. I heard talk of people going underground were planning to go underground because of out-of-control indigenous life form. Boom. will destroy the vegetation, terminate the crops, and the people and animals will be next. In Texas, Arizona, dogs. There's some bad dog stories with a certain type of insect. It's like a flea eating dogs alive, kind of like a bot fly. But it's like a flea, right? But instead of being on the skin, it goes in the skin. They excrete a toxin, causing the dog to be very lethargic, too lethargic to scratch. The dog doesn't live past uh, things like four or five months or something like that. This year, when the summer comes, the numbers of animals that will undergo that will be hit by that. It's going to spread. It will. My heart goes out to anybody with pets because the world's going to seem a bit cruel in many different ways, and we have to prepare ourselves for those things. These are things most people do not think about. They don't. I know they're coming, and I will not deceive myself at any time. The Lord showed me what he showed me. And I have to maintain myself in certain areas. I don't share too much of those things because people really can't handle it. You can talk about everything, even ETs, but don't talk about it. The uncontrollable death of pets that will eventually grow in the millions. It's just been quite merciful, very merciful. See, while everybody's looking for the big things, we're forgetting about the concrete things that are forming already. Already. When COT first began, I gave a warning twice, and I really didn't give it again, and you guys know what that warning is. You guys already know what that warning is. You already know. I told everybody a day was coming when many would have to put their own pets down. Still more days would come where pets would be a thing in the past because life will become... Very, uh, before you go bonkers over that statement, your father in heaven is over there. The, the animals are secure. They're totally obedient. 
He did not send them to this earth to suffer. Their bodies can flinch. They can make little faces, but it does not mean to suffer. Too often, as Christians, we forget this is our Father's domain, his world, his creation. We forget about that. When Isis was here, I always tell this story. When Isis was here, they were beheading children. Children were beheaded with a smile on their face, and not one scream came from the children. Only praise at your Father in heaven. See, he can nullify the effects as he so desires. The problem with us is this. In our days before we were called, when we were living like Sodom and Gomorrah, things hurt us. And because we got hurt in the world, we say, well, I wonder if I can get hurt like that again. And we do silly things which have consequences, consequences the Most High has told us about. And we get frightened. Well, maybe God will have me go back to that pain again. Right? And some people live a theoretical life. Everything is theoretical. So their quality of life is compromised. What works for me is to live in this day, the day given to me. This is a process. And people are going to quickly learn that they, yes, they tried to make life a paradise. And that's not what they're here for. Isn't that funny? I'm going to take a break in a minute, but listen to me, folks. Listen, we're not to make this world our paradise. That's what the world does to throw you off. And when things do not go according to what the world has said that you can have, that's when we get angry. Think about it. I'll be back in a moment. I'll say it again. The world told us we can make this our paradise. And when it doesn't work out that way, we get angry. And all that came from the world. None of that came from the Most High. The Most High told us this is a process. You're about to be born. This is the womb. This is the daydream. You're about to wake up. The world teaches you to make this daydream your paradise. And when you cannot, you feel disparaged. The Father told you to work it out. Work things out. Work your salvation. Refine your life. Purge yourselves. Learn who you are. Who he is. Make a decision. And let this process be fulfilled and finish the race. That's what the Lord told us. But the world said, hey. Grow up, make this world what you want it to be. Go have fun. And they always advertise fun. And so that's what people have been chasing, is fun. And when they can't get it, they say, well, it's me, I can't have fun. That's what they say. If you believe that, you'll have no joy. No joy. You can't have joy. Because to believe in the world's way is to believe in a lie. We know who planted those seeds in the world. Believing the world is believing Satan himself, not your father. That's why the word of the world opposes the word of God. If we all knew this was a process, we would have an understanding of things that are happening, and nothing happening would upset us. Do you know that? It, wouldn't, it would only refine us, because every crisis reminds us of the truth of ourselves. Haven't, have, we should learn that through everything we've ever gone through. We've learned who we were. God is breaking the illusion from us. The world gave us one identity. And the Lord said, no, that's not who you are. And he gives, up, he gives our identity right, to us for real. Guess what we keep doing? We keep trying to balance the world and to balance our Father at the exact same time. And we're afraid to let the world go and to adopt all things of the living God. We're afraid. We're afraid something has crept into the church. Maybe that's what the book of Jude was talking about. Because your feasts of charity is your gathering of love. When you eat the word of God together, that's a gathering of love. That's where these things are who have crept in unawares. Men of old, ordained to be ungodly men. That means they're working as agents among us to keep their crook ways among us. They'll lose in this house. I'll be back in a minute right here at COT, everybody.
I know I was only supposed to be here for 30 minutes, but let me answer some more questions and then I'll go. They can wait a little bit longer. I'll be right back, everybody. Hey, everybody, I'm back once again. You guys are good to go. Now, surely somebody has a, a question, comment, something on all that stuff I just said. Normally, normally at this part of the conversation, just about everybody has a question. You know what it is? They'll say, but the Lord said, you know, we would be sustained this, that, and the other. So let me ask you this. Let's face the truth here. Because the truth is people, for some reason, they are being hurt, trampled underfoot, tossed to the side, taken advantage of, having setbacks and everything else. But why is the simple answer? Why is that happening to people? Hear me on this. Let me ask you guys something. Quick question, then I'll get back to yours. What would you rather have? The results of the world or the results of the living God? Which one? So I'll tell you this. Whose every word you follow, you will have the results of whatever word you follow. You will partake of the fruit of the word you follow. So if you listen to the world word and you live your life accordingly, you're going to have worldly results and you will be hurt, miserable, beat up, right? All those things are going to happen to you if you press in and seek to obey the word of God. By the way, you can't obey the word of God and you live your life by the standard of the world. You're going to have to go up a bunch or not. When you live by the word of God, you have godly results. You want to really be blessed? I mean, really not playing fleet. I got injured pretty bad the other day, right? I did. You guys may not know the extent. You may not know all of what took place. But I'm supposed to be down for four weeks based on what happened. Like four weeks? Are you kidding? Nobody has time for four weeks. But guess what? I seek to live my life by the Lord's word, not by this world's standards. Doctors can tell me anything. They give me good things to pray for, but I have a strong desire to press in. I don't want a vacation. I don't want to relax. I don't want any of those things because every day somebody is dying. Every day, somebody didn't make it. Every single day, somebody couldn't figure it out. And if all, if they had somebody who would keep the standard, just a little standard, of Christ, they could have had an example of real freedom, a real breakthrough, real heal, real progress. You know how I know that? Because I was a little bitty human being one day, and I needed to see an example of something that supported my heart for a little bit of righteousness, and I couldn't find it. I couldn't see it. Nothing incurred the good, nothing. That was a very miserable time. So, because I was starved of it, I know how it feels to look for it and not find it. I know how it feels to find corruption all over the place. So I choose not to be that. We all grow up in this process. All of us are sent, saved by grace. But my pursuit is daily. In that pursuit is real. And godly results are what you get when you pursue the word of God, not perfect it. Just pursue it. Pursue it in truth. Now, your questions. What do you have? Somebody says, sounds like my childhood, so I broke the cycle. Well, you know what? That's why we went through what we went through. So we would absolutely not uh, be so easy, right, to let that fall upon somebody else. Somebody says, my collection... 24 Civil War. Well, I tell you, look, truth be told, I know this about people. I know this about people. Truth be told, when it comes down to it, if a crisis were to come to America, right? Hear me. If a real crisis came to America, everybody would put that election stuff behind them. They would. When a crisis comes for some reason, we as human beings, we, we, we do step up to the plate. We do. We really do. Despite the griping and the complaining, for some reason, we step up to the plate. Not everybody, but the majority. 
of people will do that. So I believe this. What's happening in the governmental system is a product of the government. It is. But we also live in the days. We live in day. We live in the days, I believe, of the rise and the presentation of the beast, which means very dark kingdoms are going to become prosperous. According to the book of Revelation, righteousness is not going to be the order of the day in the world for a small period of time. Do you hear me? So these, th- these dark kingdoms are going to have their way. Christ is prospering. It's doing that already. It is. People are being educated spiritually by people who have no relation, no interest in the Bible. Can you imagine that? Yet they're learning everything about spiritualism. They're lifting up wickedness. They're lifting up people who practice voodoo. They're lifting up psychics and everybody else, and they're actually trusting in them. They're trusting in these people, and they're believing in these people. You're in a protected community. You guys don't believe in them, right? But three-quarters of America believes in them, not Christ. And more and more, every single day, people are joining in with the bandwagon. That's why, listen, let me give you this. Let me give you this one thing that you'll always hear. This does not come from our Father. This comes from those voodooism folks, right? They say this, you ready? This is what they say, and I will not adopt it. They say, well, spirits, spirits require energy, lots of energy to do things. That's what they say. You have got to be kidding. That's what spirits require a lot of energy to do things. Oh, they also say, yes, that was a child spirit. And that was the woman's grandfather who was here in the house for 28 years. And he didn't want to go into the light. I mean, really? These people act like. Now, now mind you, this information is coming through whom? Psychics. Psychics that are devout to Christ? No. The psychics that had a problem with Christ. Come to find out, these things you had to be very careful of. Because if you're, you will, somebody can start talking about that. You'll dream about it and think that you had some sort of divine dream. God has already given us a warning. Here it is. And God shall send them a strong delusion that they would believe a lie, that they all might be damned who love not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, do these people have pleasure in unrighteousness? You better believe it. They're not giving up their drinking. They're not giving up their fornication. They're not giving up any of those things they're doing. And they're trying to represent righteousness in the earth under a different, whole different cloth without Christ. How foolish have we become to deny the creator living on his earth and we are part of his creation. The created denying the creator. And this is his process of return. And many are ignoring They're believing in more and more foolishness. That's how you know. That's how you know. So don't expect righteous people to represent these kingdoms. Expect crooked, dark people to represent these kingdoms. Expect them to follow the Antichrist, to come in peaceably, to win over people by flattery. Expect that. They will be in position. By the way, It is God who empowers the kingdom of the beast to rise in the first place, or it couldn't rise. He's doing this for a cause. Somebody says, does the ten kings have anything to do with the bricks? The uh, kings, not kingdoms, ten kings. There are ten kings, right? Well, yeah, there are ten kings, but there are ten kings. But we're talking about the seven kingdoms, or you should say eight, five, or fallen. One is, and one is not yet come. Even he is the eighth and goeth into perdition. I know that's complicated, but don't. I'm working out an illustration for that. Simple. Anyway, these kingdoms of the earth, all you have to ask yourself is this. Jesus told us something. Jesus said, they, they were like, hey, those people are over there doing things in your name. Jesus said, if they're not against us, they're with us, right? Or, or if they, you know, they're complimenting us. I'm going to say this. They're complimenting us if they're not against us, right? Now, name the nation 
that embraces Jesus Christ. What nation embraces Jesus Christ? Can you name one? Anybody? Can you name one that embraces Christ? Somebody said the USA. No, we don't. We don't. Not as a nation, we don't. As individual believing people, we do. Not as a nation. Not as a nation. You remember the woman that was on the floor in Congress? They threw out. Then a guy was on the floor. They refused him prayer time. And if you knew what would happen in the hallways, you would weep. See, it's in Singapore. Sometimes you have individuals. Not as a nation, though. None is the answer. Not one. Not one. So if these nations are not embracing Christ, by whose power do they work? Who are they seeking for the resolve? Are they praying to Christ? When a man seeks within, but he has no mind of Christ, he is bound within his flesh and his answers are coming from dark spiritual places, period, which ultimately come from Satan. And in this case, it's true for everybody out there at the moment. We're really in a predicament. You, you, those of you who believe, you are the last line defense in the earth. You are the representation in the earth. Your kingdom, you represent the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God goes wherever you go. It's inside of you. The authority of the kingdom for those of you who obey, that authority is within you. And in that case, Jesus said, he is giving you power to tread upon scorpions and serpents. And he's giving you all power over the enemy. And nothing will by any means hurt you if you obey him. How is it that the U.S. follows both the Vatican and the Kesara? Well, I'm not going to speak against what people don't quite understand yet. Every nation is going to reveal itself. They will. They will. Every nation will reveal itself. But the USA has chartered something for the world. They seek a blessing to go forward with any plan from one source. But that one source, why would they have a dragon that they kissed the finger of? I, I got to. I got to leave out, folks. And well, that's a that's surely a midnight hour thing. The chalice that is mandated to be right underneath the place during communion. Yeah, I got to leave that one. Alone. Those are different stories. The chambers and the relics that nobody can touch, save he who conducts the rites, rites that people know not of. Yeah, it's certainly a midnight hour thing right there. Listen, the Lord Jesus of Nazareth is not double-minded. Those who stand within Christ under his power are not double-minded. They're not. Especially, especially when they're operating by his authority, there's no double-mindedness. There is only Christ and the Father. They will align themselves by way of the Holy Spirit, not man's spirit. Now, when God speaks anything, listen to me, when a person speaks something, first of all, they can speak about things you want to hear. When the Lord speaks, he's not going to speak about anything you want to hear. There's conviction will always come with the Lord's words, always. He's not going to compliment our iniquity. He's not going to do that. He's not going to make us feel at ease in our sin, he's not going to do that. Conviction will always be there. But you know it is of a different power when you feel content with your sin. It is not of the Most High. It is of the Most Low. If our Father loves us, then he'll never be content with our iniquity in the slightest degree, which means his Holy Spirit's going to carry conviction and his word is going to carry conviction. And we will be convicted when he gives us a word. It is only Satan himself who will tell you, sit back and relax. You're okay. That's not what the gospel says. That's not what the Lord said. That's not what the prophet said. That's not what the father said. And that's not what the Holy Spirit ever communicated. 
the prophets spoke warnings, did they not? Jesus spoke, come on, children, let's go before it's too late. And then warnings, and he encouraged to keep doing what? To keep going in the way of the Lord. Betty not. The Holy Spirit spoke what? To the apostles. Warnings. And it encouraged everybody to keep going, no matter what they went through. See, God speaks in these specific patterned ways. He never, he never compliments our iniquity, our carnal minds, our plans, our stuff. He didn't do that. So if somebody is talking and they make you feel at ease with your sin and you have no conviction, how can that be of the most high? You have to try the spirit, find the spirit to see what it's up. When they said, Mike, what's happening to the voters could be devastating. Is there a solution? You know, many of what happened Listen, here, here it is. You ready? A lot of things out there are very blurry. You don't know if they're real or not. Yeah. You know, continue to pray for folks. Okay? Continue to look out for folks. But watch. Let God uncover everything. He will uncover everything. He will uncover everything. Everything in the darkness is being bought to the light. You're going to see a lot of that. You're going to hear that, a lot of that. Watch this coming week. You're going to hear some of that. What was in the dark is being brought to the light. What? You'll see it this week. You'll see it the week coming up. You're going to see it the week coming up. Now, I'm not talking about some small issue either. You see it. So wait till God reveals things and then act on it. But don't dot theories. Don't act on hearsays. Don't act on those things. Everybody who has acted on those things has messed up. Listen to me. Please hear me. Everybody who acted on those things messed up. People have good intentions, right? Sometimes people think they see things. They think something is about to take place, but you've got to look at the fruit of every single tree and you've got to ultimately hear from your father. Try not to be one of those who wants to be the first one to be right. Please try not to be that person. Try not to be that person. Be the one who makes a difference. Be the example that people can follow. Because you're the leaders. You are. You're the example of the kingdom of God in the earth. You're standard bearers. All of you are standard bearers. And the world does not have that standard. And those who represent the world, they don't have that standard. You have that standard. Please remember that. Remember that. You saw on the cross and what that was really about. Well, it's quite simple. Right, first of all, a thief on the cross, right? Think about this. You have two thieves on the cross, and Christ is up there too, right? One of them actually believes. Jesus identified that, and he told him the truth. When he said, today you're going to be with me in paradise, it was because he truly believed. It's because he told that other guy, hey, this man has done nothing. He identified the Christ. There's a big message in that. Because hear me on this. People know the name of Christ. They do. They know what he did. They believe he died on the cross. Right? But many have not identified him yet. They haven't. Listen. When you identify Christ and you really know who he is, Right? It's just like knowing where all your lost money is. If you know where your lost money is, you're not going to ask anybody for a dime. If you know who Christ is, you're not back out in the world lost in the sauce, are you? You know where the go-to source is. People know of Christ. In a lot of cases, they don't know him yet. They know of him. They just don't know him. That thief on the cross? He knew who Christ was. That's why Jesus said, today you're going to be with me in paradise. He knew who Christ was. He didn't simply identify. He knew who he was. He couldn't make that statement without knowing who Christ was. He knew. And he had reverence and respect. He knew. And because he knew 
and because he believed, because he defended Jesus, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And what did Jesus say today? You're going to be with me in paradise. See, when we do that here on this earth, we live differently. There's no way a person can continue to walk in iniquitous ways when they have both identified and truly believe in what the Messiah has done, is doing, and will do. If I know the Messiah is coming, why in the world would I go out and do some iniquitous thing? If I truly believe the word that no man has promised tomorrow, there's no way I'm going to step forward and, and take part in some iniquitous thing. So if I truly do believe, I'm in a ready state always. If I believe, I'm going to be in a ready state always. If I believe. The moment I don't believe, Jesus is coming back at any given moment. The moment I don't believe that no man has promised tomorrow. Right? You know how we walk around? We know we're going to be here Friday. We know we're going to be here Saturday. That's not what the word says. The word says tomorrow is promised to no one. You know, something unfortunate happens. When people pass away, people say, oh, that is so unexpected. What are we talking about? Hmm? Why do we do that? On a continuous basis over and over again. Why? Why do we do that? Hmm? Do you see that? If you believed that if you stepped out your front door, you'd be shot in the head, you wouldn't go out your front door. You would not. But if you did not believe somebody's going to shoot you in the head when you walk out your front door, you're going to go out your front door. You see that? Now, I can sit here and say, oh, yeah, I, I don't believe anybody's outside my front door. I can say that. But let me tell you this. What I do next, what I do next communicates the truth of me. What I do communicates the truth of me. I can say everything. Don't let that fool you. That shouldn't fool anybody. How we have lived this life is our truth to our fun. We can say everything, but what are you doing? Faith without works is dead. We can say a bunch of stuff. Satan said a bunch of stuff. Satan knows who Christ is. Satan believes that Jesus died on the cross. Do you know that? He believes that he died on the cross. He does. Should he be saved because he believes that he died on the cross? What did Jesus say? Believeth in him. Do you know what that is? If you believe in a person, guess what you believe in? You believe what they said. Uh-oh. You actually believe what they said. To believe what somebody said means you have heard. Uh-oh. That means you agree with them. Oh, you know what you have people doing right now? They're running around. They're saying they're saved, but they do not agree with the gospel. There's a problem. They don't agree with what Jesus did. If we murmur and complain, we don't agree with how the Father's raising us, right? And then most Christians can believe Christ for everybody else, but they cannot believe him for themselves. That's no good either. Time to throw that out the window. That is, that's not some badge that anybody should wear. I'll tell you something, though. I'll tell you something. When we actually agree with Christ, it's going to be with great conviction. It's going to be with absolute recognition of who we have been. So that's the biggest thing, is the identity that we truly have in this world. Once you see yourself and what you've really been, and you believe in Christ, you need him, and you have no desire to continue to be what you have, you know, because you believe in him. You believe in what he stood for. You believe in his gospel. You believe in his sacrifice. You believe in his promise. Promise says, Paul, see how that works? You do that. There's no way you can ever stay the same. You will not stay the same. And contrary to popular belief, you're not going to be tired. You're going to be determined. And there's a, there's a telltale sign of a Christian who truly agrees with Christ and truly understands that they were a dirt ball in this world. 
and truly honors Christ for his sacrifice, for forgiving them from what they turn away from. You know what the telltale sign is? You will not hear them complain. You will not hear them complain. They're on a mission. They don't complain. Did you ever hear the apostles complain? Anybody? I heard the disciples complain. I did not hear the apostles complain. And I only heard one. Of, well, I heard two of them complain. But you didn't hear the apostles complain, did you? Hmm? You didn't hear them. You heard what? Determination? That's what you heard. Determination. You didn't hear them complain. They were working things. They were pressing in harder and deep. They believed in what Jesus said. They advocated for that belief and they walked and lived in it. They did. People want the power. They want to see the miracle. They want to, you know, be that beholder of a specific thing. A lot of people, they can't believe enough because nothing is happening in their lives. Well, until a person goes forward in faith, because the Lord works like this, he says, I'll show you after you commit. That's what the Lord does. You commit first. You get the full package. People want a, to get a sneak peek of the package so they can commit. And just show me this, Lord, and then I'll commit. I said that one time. I said, Lord, I'll tell you what. You take away my own personal will so I don't screw up anymore. Anybody ever do that? I did that. I told the Lord I did not want my will, and he never removed my will. A year later, I repent. No, two years later, I repented for ever saying that. Anybody out there like that, you mess up so bad, you just keep messing up, right? Till you get to the point where you say, Lord, just take my personal will away. All I do is mess everything. I'm, I'm just keep sinning. Just remove it. I mean, one of those sincere heart-to-heart -heart deals, right? A heart-to-heart -heart conversation. And it never happens. Why? Why not? Because the Lord does not want robots. He didn't want some programmed robot. He wants a child that chooses him. Here's a question. How many of you, without being forced, with no pressure, you choose the family of the living God? You choose to be a part of it. You accept the standards God has instilled. See, that's being part of the family. You're going to ask yourself, do I really want to be a part of the family or not? Because if you want to be a part of that family, then you're called to be a part of that family. So finish the process of being the absolute chosen. You're becoming part of a family. You're being fully adopted. And if that is the case, you're letting go of who you used to be. You're not that same person again. I'll tell you something, too. Once you can see what you have been and you're disgusted, you look at the old man you used to be, and if you are truly disgusted, walk forward with the Lord. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See how that fits? The first step is letting go of the old man. you got to be disgusted with that fellow. Don't defend him. Cover for it. See it for what it is. And that first act is to be thankful to be delivered from it. See, the truth is, when a person truly repents, and we talked about that yesterday, when somebody truly repents, you are disgusted at your own iniquity, and you will not, nothing can turn you back to it. Nothing can make you do it again. Nothing. Do you know that? And so Jesus finishes the cleansing by way of a sacrifice. The blood is enough to wash away that sinful thing you turned away from. If a person repents, the Lord is just to forgive. You'll find the scripture also about the saved. They have repented. See, a lot of people think, well, they say once saved, always saved. That's not what the word says. If that were the case, there would not come a falling away first. Uh-oh, we got a problem. If that, if, if that were true, there would be no threat of anybody being blotted out of the book of life. Oh, that would be terrible. Wouldn't it? I don't even think about that part. You know why? I got a secret. I do. Have you guys noticed how I don't force people to accept Christ? I'll never do that. I'll never do that. Do you know why? It has to be your choice. It has to. And it has to be genuine. Not something forced. It has to be genuine. Right? 
But hear me on this. I have a secret. See, when you, no matter what anybody else thinks, listen to me, folks, doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It does not matter what anybody else has seen or what they have not seen. That doesn't matter. You know what matters is when you give it all you have. When you give this walk with the Lord, all of what you can give it every day of your life, something happens. You know in your heart and in your soul and in every fiber of your being. May you with an upright heart free. You were free with your choice to do whatever, and you chose righteousness, the Lord's way. When you have given it all of what you've got, you will not be leaned over. You know what you'll do? You'll stand up and say, oh. every negative thought that comes against you, once you have honestly given it all of what you've got, any negative thought that comes against you, you'll pluck it right out the way. You'll say, no, because I did everything I could do. So I'm going to stand here with the highest of confidence because I was honest with the most high because I gave it everything. The Lord didn't ask us for extra. He didn't. He did not. He didn't ask us to do the impossible. He did not. In our honesty, we are to walk with him. That means in the truth that you have in you, when you give something, you're all, you're at peace. You know that from worldly things. If you were at a job and you got fired, right? But you gave that job everything you had. You did, did it to the best of your ability. You may start laughing. Do you know why? You'll say, well, hey, that's just not me because I did everything I could do. I did everything I could do. So you won't stand with your head hung low. You will have known that you gave it what you could give it, right? Everybody's at a different level. But if you give your walk with the Lord, that honest effort, once you give it your all, having done all of what you can do to stand, the word says what? Stand therefore. Why does it say that? That's actually a command and it's actually a blessing. That means, hey, once you do all of what you can, you have nothing to fear. I love that. That's why the Bible says, having done all of what you can do to stand, stand there for, you know what that means? Look, you did everything you do, everything you could do to stand. So guess what? You stand and let no one tell you otherwise. Do you know what that is? Do you know what that is? That's your father saying, oh, stop. It no longer matters what anybody else says. You gave it your all. I am securing you. Because you gave it your all. I am securing you. Because the only way you can have peace is that the Father maintain it. I hope you know that. That's his hands on you. That's what that is. That's my secret. Stupid or not stupid. Failed or pass or failed. Whatever the case is. I will give something, everything I've got. When I do that, I become impenetrable. I do. So it's very difficult to slow anybody down whom the Lord is propping up. It is not me being a person of strength. That's not what's happening here. That's not. It's something very simple. Something that took me a while, a, a long while, to see. Give it everything you've got and be a witness. See, I'm not looking for my results. Do you guys know that? I'm not. I'm giving it everything I've got, but I'm not looking for my results. I don't know what the results are. I don't. But I do know what I can give. I don't know what's coming back. I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but I know what I can give. That's what I'm. And I'll give it everything I've got. And when that takes place, the Lord's not allowing a disturbance of my peace. And if you want to know joy in your life, do the same thing. Some people have no joy, and they love the Lord, but they don't have joy. Many of you do not have joy. You don't. You have happiness from time to time. You have no joy. You have a disturbance inside. If you don't want that anymore, well, we just discussed that, didn't we? Be a recipient. Don't, don't predict the outcome. Don't do that. Let your father be the father. Let the Lord be the Lord. 
You know, you know what you can give. You don't know anything else, correct? You don't know what the absolute outcome is going to be, correct? You don't know. You don't know that. Just give it your all. Approach it honestly. Give it your all. Give it the best. Give it everything. Do not, don't listen. This is important. Don't predict the outcome. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Let God be God. Stop doing that. Do you not know that when you predict the outcome and you have a flaw in your prediction, you have a flaw in your interpretation, guess what's going to happen? When it does not, when the results are not what you thought they would be, you're going to be discouraged. You're going to say, well, I'm not getting the results I thought I should get. Stop doing it. Let God be God. Stop doing the other part that's so popular among people, which is why their smiles are inverted. Stop doing that. This whole world is grumpy. Jesus said, I leave you my peace. Is any, can anything disturb the peace of Jesus if he were to give it to you? He already left it. It's already yours. Now you can have it if you do it the Lord's way. You will not have it if you do it any other way. That's the truth. You got to learn to live free in liberty. You have to learn that, right? One, one, one mystery of standing or living in, in, in the liberty of Christ is to understand that Christ will control the outcome. These things are under his control. We don't have that responsibility. He does. If I were to pray for someone and lay my hands on them, I know what I can get. God knows what he can get. He didn't call me to predict the outcome. That's not what he called me for. He called me for the task. He called me to be that demonstration of faith and of love for somebody else who can't yet see it. That's an open show of faith. You know that, don't you? When you pray for someone, lay hands on them. That's a demonstration for someone. It does not mean a person is going to be healed right then and there. That's not what it means. But if the Lord gave you that instruction, just simply obey him and give it all you've got, all your love, all your patience, all your compassion, and let the Lord finish everything. I'm telling you right now, when, when God does it, when the Lord does it, there's no way you could have predicted the outcome. You're going to fall short every single time. Don't we remember the scripture that says, God is able to do above and beyond what we're, no, no, God will do above and beyond what we're able to ask or think. Do you know what that means? You're not able to predict the outcome of what your father will do. You're not able to. You don't have the mind to. You don't have the smarts to. You don't. So leave it alone. If God's going to do above and beyond what we're able to ask or think, we don't have the capacity to predict an outcome of the living God in any situation. We don't. So leave that up to the most top. Now, when you do that, all the timing is up to the living God. You follow through by faith on your end, giving it your all, and you stand. You'll be prompt, held, embraced. Do you know what happens when you stand like that? You can withstand the wiles of the enemy. Your armor that you have on is not yours. It's the armor of God, right? It's not flea market armor. It's God's armor. Nothing can penetrate that armor. But to truly have that armor on is to truly operate in it according to the living God. When you do that, you're living free. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's no bondage where the spirit of the Lord is. There's no depression where the spirit of the Lord is. There's no sadness where the spirit of the Lord is. There is a peace that surpasses all understanding. And there's liberty, freedom, where the Spirit of the Lord is. Think about that. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Now you understand why Satan has people preoccupied with having control over everything. Now you know why. Because it fights through liberty. You know there's healing in liberty. There's healing in freedom. How many of you right now, seriously, right now, you feel like you're in somewhat of a vice? You do. You feel like you're in a vice and it felt like you had to control aspects of your life or it would jump out of control on you. 
How many felt that way? You're going around checking your inventory, making sure you did this, that, the other, and this, that, and all this kind of stuff. And you do that every single day. Because if you don't do that, things will get out of control. Things turn quickly into chaos. How many of you feel that way? I bet you it's a lot. Bet you some. Can I tell you something controversial? Hmm? Look around again. And all that stuff you're trying to keep. Whose stuff is that? Who's this? Who's this? Is it yours? You know, they're just tools. Tools, things that come and go. That's all. That's all it. They, those things around you are not you. They have nothing to do with you. They're just tools. That's all. Just tools. That's all. They're not you. See, some of you believe that if you don't keep everything in order somehow, you're going to lose control at something at work. If you don't keep control at something at home, no, no. The first, the first task, be thankful for what you have from the most high. Then be mindful. The Lord provides things to you for the sake of the kingdom and your calling in this world. Be mindful of that. Be mindful. You ready? You ready? His biggest, biggest step. Now look at everything you have and have an understanding. All of it is going to crumble. Every single last bit of it is going to crumble. But while it's not crumbled, utilize it for good. Serve someone with it. Live free. You don't have to sit there with a shotgun protecting it. Let it be an item of servitude. Live free. Let nothing put you in bondage again. That starts by identifying all of it. It's all going to crumble one day. It's all going to be gone. Therefore, it's a tool. Be thankful for that tool. You don't need to worship it. You can take care of it. Don't worship it. Always have an understanding of that and then start to utilize those tools for good. Make sure they're utilized for good. So, and so, that way you're not in bondage. You're not trying to control everything. It's okay to take care of something, right? But remember, all that stuff is to serve somebody else. Do you guys know I live by that principle and I'll never have something that just sits and looks pretty? I can't have that. I can't do it. People ask me all the time, why don't you have a git? No, no, no. If it cannot serve somebody else, I do not want it around me. And if I can't give it away, I don't want it. I don't want it. I'll never have anything that I will not give away. It's not going to happen. I don't want it. I don't want it. Now, everybody's not called to that capacity. And yes, that is taking it to the extreme because I never want to be that person that will protect his stuff from a person. No, no human beings, the number one priority. Because the Lord said, I am to do to them, serve them as I would serve him. Do to them as I would do unto him. They are of the highest priority. You are of the highest priority, not the stuff. There's no bondage there. None. And I'm so thankful. Because I was a person who was responsible for some very costly things. And that was a lot of bondage. And I carried that mindset over to my personal life, and I shouldn't have. And that can change you in ways you don't want to become. Let it go. See it for what it is. See it for what it is. Folks, okay. We're going to conclude this. See, we had a regular time. This was only supposed to last for 30 minutes. Lord, forgive me for initializing this conversation with a big one. I did. I did. I did. And not, nobody reminded me of that 30-minute mark. Hmm. I'm going to go check in to see. I'm getting harassed now. I'm supposed to be having a follow-up. class, And uh, they're not giving up. So anyway, I'm going to get this out of the way and let them do this thing. All right. I will return as soon as I can, which will be tomorrow morning sometime. And did somebody, by the way, did somebody hear some strange music playing today? Just for a little bit. Did somebody hear that today? That was part of the COT documentary. That's what it was. 
Did you guys hear that? Somebody heard it. Let me see. See if you guys were listening. But don't laugh yet. We're not done with this stuff yet. Somebody did hear it? Did somebody say yes? Okay. Did it sound like a documentary or not? That's what I wanted to know. Did it sound like a documentary? Because these documentaries are, are reaching a broad audience, right? So some people have to hear it in a very specific way. But let's see. Let's see. I'm going to do it now. I can do it. I can do that. I can do that now. Let's see what the play button is. You guys can really like Sound okay? Sound okay? That is all COT. I'm playing all the instruments on it. I do things like that. Yeah, you get. I can still do it. I'm going to do it while I can still do it. I'm thankful, though, guys, because I can't, I can't feel strings and keys. I can't. Anyway, there it is. There's the, uh, the front half of it. There are, uh, I, mean, I think, six sections in there, six or seven, something like that. Anyway. That's part of the COT documentary. I want to make sure it sounds like a documentary. Because it'll be playing throughout the entire documentary, different parts of it. You know how you segment it. And some parts are highlighted, some parts are not. So on and so forth. Anyway, that's, uh, there's some other ones too. That's for one that's going out fairly quickly, right? That's going to be released by audio. But the second release of that same documentary will come out video, the very first video of COT that will be released for, officially from COT, for me, right? That'll be uh, maybe a month or so from now. But the audio is coming out first. Anyway, there it was. You guys heard it. Okay. Listen, I'm going to see you guys tomorrow right here at the Council of Time. I do have to go under observation a little bit. So we'll see how that works out. If they kick me out, who knows what I'm, who knows? But guys, God bless you. Listen, your questions are incredibly important. You have to forgive me for talking too much. You do. You do. Because, um, you know, every single question is, is important. It really is. It really is. And you, you guys remember, I used to have Angela to help speed me along. She'd say, okay, next question. Remember that? Because I get carried away sometimes. We'll do that again. Pull her out of her bush. How about that? Anyway, guys. God bless each of you. I'm going to see you guys next time right here at COT, which will be tomorrow. I will be here tomorrow. All right. I will be. So I'll see you then. All right. If you guys still have questions, coordinate with somebody. Get those to, um, uh, what are the admins in COT, right? Um, get them to Robin. Who can get them to some of the admins in COT or, you know, the people in COT. And then you guys coordinate to get that list to me so I can sit down and look through all of them. Okay, but they do plan on answering every single question. I do. You might like the method in which I'll do it too. I want to make a habit of it because I do love questions. I do. It it uh, gives me a sense that I'm actually helping, right? Even the more so. Those are important for me. You guys in California, the bulk of the storm is about to pass over your heads, but Arizona is in the crosshairs. But you you guys have more you got five more of these events coming not three five more of these events coming and i'm praying for those who are in the firing line of these storms god bless you guys i'll see you guys next time right here at cot god bless i'll keep you guys updated uh via the site okay i'll do that it'll change uh probably a little after a little after seven in the morning, something like that. All right. God bless you guys. I'll see you next time right here at COT. God bless.